the case of the RST is one of great frustration. Uh, I've followed uh, the situation for a long time. In 2006, we deployed uh, the NESDP mission in, uh, in DRC to help organize the elections. I was one of the persons who went there either as electoral observer and as member of the missions of the ESD that we've, we've deployed to, to evaluate the ESDP mission. And my conclusion is all, of, all what we have done regarding uh, DRC has been half-hearted. There are some of our members who have a particular interest, not always for the good reasons for DRC, and others who simply don't care. And that's why we are, on one hand, we, we, we have this huge amount of money from EDF dedicated to DRC, but the people who are fighting for justice and human rights, like uh, Mr. Mukela just told us that they're not getting any of this money. NGOs, human rights NGOs, are, is not being supported, apparently, according to Mr. Mukela. Uh, and we have the USEC and UPOL, and despite the fact that Mr. Gottschalk told us, told us that there's indeed been good, uh, good uh, results seen from these missions, we know that they are not at all with the resources, uh, financial and humane, that are needed for the, the, the needs. So their impact is, is limited, although it's, it's relevant, it's positive, but it is limited. Uh, and indeed, as it has been highlighted, the question of reform of the security sector is absolutely vital. But it's much more than that. It's the whole institutional capacity building, which is definitely not there. And it required a much more serious effort on our part if we really want to make a difference. And I don't think we are making that difference at all. And, and, and we see the, the, the tremendous contradictions, not only people who should be who are, uh, pre, uh, protected are not getting protection, and that's why you have the murder of Floribe Shebea and others, but also uh, the case of the, the Bosco and Taganda, I believe, I believe it's the DRC who has actually referred this case to the International Criminal Court. He's been indicted by the International Criminal Court. Now the DRC doesn't get, surrender him to the International Criminal Court and has actually promoted him into a top position in the army. This, this is, uh, and, and nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about that. I mean, I, I myself didn't know about that until I visited, I was in, in Kampala recently in the ICC review conference. Um, well, the, the, the situation of women, and, and as it had been highlighted, and everybody in the Great Lakes area, it's, it's a disaster. Uh, we, have, we have had plenty of hearings like this one. Uh, we have had plenty of wonderful resolutions, like the one we just adopted on Floribert Chebeya, but it doesn't make a difference. The ACP uh, dialogue, let me tell you, uh, it's, it's, very, it's very poor in this respect. You talk about Article 8, we could talk about Article 96, that never used. There is very little done there, actually, especially regarding DRC. Um, and obviously, I believe that the crucial question, apart from the reform of the security sector, which is a long-term uh, uh, reforming process, is, is indeed the question of the natural resources. But even on there, I mean, I remember in the ACP meeting in, uh, in, uh, Guinea, uh, in Papua New Guinea in 2008, a number of us, have put forward that question and have suggested that some initiative be taken to identify, to name in shame, the companies, European, multinational, whatever nationality, that are directly involved in the exploitation and in financing these militia and the army groups who are, you know, in this vicious circle of violence. 
involved in the, 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 the mineral uh, exploitation. And, I mean, the reaction from the Commission was outrageous. <laughs> I will never forget that. The Commissioner in charge at that time for development. So, uh, I believe that is the way to do it. 